Well, hey CrossCart fans. Today is brakes. We've got the pedal we fashioned. I've got the rear brake just off of an ATV. Uh, this is from a Polaris Outlaw because I know those pretty well and you can get them on the inexpensive. I'm sure any brake will work. It's just a rear brake with two mounts, too easy. Now, there's things that I go with because I've used them before and they work. And I, I don't really like straying from things that I know work because that saves you money in case you buy something that doesn't work. So this is a Tilton 3 quarter inch 76 series master cylinder. Now I bought a 5 16 24 thread pitch adapter with lock nut to go on the end. This is only like, I don't know, $3.50. And we'll use that to hook it to the pedal. The brake lines I use, I've used on everything, and I love them because they're so easy. They're not inexpensive. There's definitely less expensive ways to do brakes, but this is so doggone easy, I can't help but do it. So the brake lines, all the banjos, all the fittings, was just shy of 200 bucks. But it's absolutely worth it. So. I'll show you why. See this rear caliper? You take this out, you put on a banjo, get some washers obviously, you put it on there, and then you take your Venhill line, and you screw it on here until it's tight. You bleed the brakes, they work incredibly well. If you happen to tear a brake line, you can get a replacement. If you grab a stick or a log and it rips your brake line, you can just order a replacement. You don't have to build a whole new brake system. It is so doggone easy, which makes building nice, which makes your day in the garage nice. So let's get all of this stuff put on that buggy. All right, so now that we've made our little bracket, we're just gonna hook it up to this inch and a quarter upper A-arm attachment point. Put our master cylinder in place. Screw it back into the pedal. Now I'm gonna go about halfway into this female heim joint. That gives me adjustment front to back. Cinch up the lock nut. Let's put it right there. And just weld it in place. All right, so I'm gonna get the nuts, lock it in place so I have it exactly where I want it. Now you're gonna to wanna to add some gussets to your bracket. Uh, this is thin metal, so it'll just bend once you start hitting that pedal. So I put one on the top and then I put one on the bottom. Now I just got a pack of gussets from Go Power Sports, so these things are pretty handy in situations like this. So first up is the double banjo and, and the fittings for that. So this one's gonna be for the rear brake. These are gonna be for the front brakes. Now, these are copper crush washers. So you don't wanna tighten this up. You just wanna put everything in place. And feel it out and then you can tighten it. Now, the reason I'm using a double banjo fitting is pretty simple. Uh, I only have to buy one master cylinder. That's why I bought a three quarter inch bore because we're pushing a lot of fluid 
to the back brake and the two front brakes. All right, so now that's in place, we get some more stuff. All right, first on my list is this short connector. Just screw that right in. And then from this short guy, there's gonna be a T connector specific to these ends. And that's gonna sit right in the middle. All right, so the bolts for the front brakes, washer, banjo, washer. Just screw it right in. And then we'll have to figure out how we wanna route it. All right, so for the rear brake, uh, I like this caliper because it's threaded. So all I had to do was make these two arms on a swivel, put a little angle on the end, and the caliper bolts to itself. Makes it kind of easy. I don't know if all ATVs are built that way. That's why I bought this Polaris Outlaw caliper. Now, the reason I made articulating arms is because we can put this in position on the disc, which is Go Power Sports as part of that whole assembly in the components list. And we can use the arms to set the exact position of this. Now you don't want it riding on top of the, the disc. You want a little bit of clearance. You want the pads to contact completely so you can just angle your arms to get whatever angle you want. Now this doesn't have to ride completely on top. If you made one shorter, it can ride up there. It can ride back here. The disc doesn't care. So I'm gonna spend a little time positioning this and you also wanna make sure it's level or you're gonna get that disc rubbing on one of your pads. Now this is also a floating caliper, which means when this presses in, it pulls in on both of these. So the uh, brake noise should be to a minimum. So I'll just get this welded in. Um, I'm using quarter inch thick, which is probably overkill. 3 16 would have worked, but I didn't have anything in an inch and a half width, which I wanted to use. And I was also considering once it's welded in, making a little crossbar right here just for strength, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so now let's run the rear brake line. Now we'll just run the back half. Now I'm gonna use the banjo bolt that came with the kit just to get some fresh washers on there. And the last order of business is just connecting the reservoir. All right, now I'm just gonna go through and tighten up everything. Uh, all the connectors, all of the lines. Put this in, bleed the brakes, and we're ready to go. That was super easy. So I found something that could be better. Now all this sliding around going back and forth, we have triangulated here so that the axle can be strong. It's not gonna slip around. The chain is gonna stay where it's supposed to. However, <clears throat> something I found was that this hub was loosening up. It was actually pushing this even though it is cinched on there. Uh, it was very gradual. It only moved maybe a 64th, but it was enough to make this hub loose. And when anything's loose, it can destroy itself. So, what I came up with, and I couldn't find anything specific for this axle, um, all I did was take a measurement from my collar to bearing block collar, which is four inches. And I got some PVC pipe that is one inch inside diameter. Now you could go and 
sleeve your entire axle to keep all of your spacings great. But since this is triangulated right here, this is kind of our weak point. So all that pressure is gonna move into here. Now, I know you're thinking like plastic, what are you doing? Uh, it's gonna crush, it's gonna give anyway. Well, the majority of the strength is coming from this collar. So this is just assisting this. It's not the actual strength, it's just assisting that. So we just get that on there nice and tight. And then we can really crank down on this bolt and just cinch all of this up. Now my test pilot for the finished VF1, my eight year old daughter. Now, you wanna put your best into something, not take any shortcuts, have your daughter be the first to drive it. Let's see what you got, kid.